Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Pastor Rick Utzi from Maranatha Community Fellowship and I'm from Plain City, Ohio. You know, this past week we celebrated Labor Day on Monday, and it's always a nice day to have off. Um, and it also signals really the be unofficial beginning of fall, the end of summer, beginning of fall. And one of the good things about that is football started. So we had college football last weekend this coming. Actually, tonight and this weekend, we have pro football coming up. So I'm just thinking about this time of year. And I was reminded as I thought about labor and work and and football and all of this stuff going on, um, what the Bible says about labor in Ecclesiastes. And it talks about different things in Ecclesiastes. And I'll read it here in a minute, but how things are forgotten. So I was wondering, how many of you remember who won the Super Bowl last year? And some of you, I'm sure, if you're diehard football fans, you know. But what about two years ago? You know, even if we love football, it's probably hard for most of us to remember who won last year or even two years ago, unless it's it's our favorite football team um, that actually won. So what I want to do now is I want to read to you something out of Ecclesiastes that talks about labor. And it says in Ecclesiastes 2, verse 16, For the wise and the foolish both die. The wise will not be remembered any longer than the fool. In the days to come, both will be forgotten. So this is kind of saying, he's kind of lamenting the fact that no matter how wise I am, no matter how hard I work, you know, the foolish person, the wise person is going to die and everything's going to be forgotten. And then he goes on to say, so I came to hate life because everything done under the sun is so troubling. Everything is meaningless, like chasing the wind. I came to hate all my hard work here on earth, for I must leave to others everything I have earned. And who can tell whether my successors will be wise or foolish? Yet they will control everything I have gained by my skill and hard work under the sun. How meaningless. So I gave up in despair, questioning the value of all my hard work in this world. And as you read that, it's kind of like, oh my goodness, what is life all about? If, if we're just going to die and somebody else, you know, if we happen to be successful, somebody else takes it all over, what's the point? And, and we understand from reading on and in the New Testament what the point is. And it's really Jesus Christ. And I'm going to read some verses about that. But, but as I thought about this, what really irks me about the prosperity gospel is that the focus is here on earth now and the material things we have now. And that's what um, the writer of Ecclesiastes, who was probably Solomon, who was probably the wealthiest and wisest person to have ever lived, said it's all meaningless. If that's all there is and we come to the end of life and we all die and turn everything over to our to the people who will inherit it. But the Bible says in the New Testament, there's some good news. The Bible says that there is a big difference in Jesus Christ our Lord when it comes to our labor and our work. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, which is the great chapter about Jesus' resurrection and about how he's gonna come back and how we will be resurrected if we believe in Jesus Christ. And it goes on to say in 15, verse 57 after he talked about death he goes on to says but thank god he gives us victory over sin and death through our lord jesus christ so my dear brothers and sisters be strong and immovable always work enthusiastically for the lord for you know that nothing you do for the lord is ever useless so he's saying hey because of jesus christ and because we're going to have resurrected bodies that are never going to die again, and that Jesus Christ never forgets what we do. And it's not useless because Jesus Christ is coming again. So he tells us, work enthusiastically. And he goes on um, in, uh, Paul also wrote in Philippians 2, verses 14 to 16, it says, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God. Shine like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. Paul was saying, hey, when Jesus Christ returns and everything I've done for him and for the church, it's not going to be useless. I'm going to finish the race and it's all going to be worthwhile. 
And then Paul also goes on in Colossians and says, hey, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. Remember, the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and that master you are serving is Christ. But if you do what is wrong, you will be paid back for the wrong you have done. God has no favorites. He's going on to say there that hey, work for the Lord and not just your boss, because he sees and he will repay. And it goes on to say, hey, if you go about doing wrong, you'll get repaid for the wrong you did. He shows no favorites. He is a just God. And then the last verse, Galatians 6, 9, and 10. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So do good to everyone. So he's saying, hey, don't give up. Keep on running the race. You know, God, Jesus Christ, when he comes again, gives us an inheritance as a reward. So the bottom line is, unlike Ecclesiastes where he said it's all in vain, the bottom line is, if we believe in Jesus Christ, it is not all in vain. Everything that we work for, um, we, should, we should hold firmly to the Word, to Jesus Christ, to the Bible. We should shine as bright lights in the world. We should work enthusiastically. We should run the race. All this is done now so that when He comes again, He will not forget. He is faithful and He is able to hold that inheritance for us in heaven. And that's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we labor, and we think about Labor Day and rest, but as we celebrate the labors we have, let's remember that we're working for Jesus Christ our Lord. And by the way, if you're still wondering who won those Super Bowls, um, last year it was the Seattle Seahawks. Two years ago it was the Baltimore Ravens. So I will see you next time on The Bottom Line.